took a chance on a good thing. Yeah. Now I got you on my right wing. Making love like it's casual. And you text me in the morning, you're available. Am I, am I dreaming? Can't believe I forgot this feeling. Finally found the one in my life that I wanna be with. No more seeking. I'm sure, I'm sure. I'll always choose you first. You're my baby. It's true. It's true. So damn worth there's no one like you Yeah, too rare to find Cause you are, you're one of a kind No words to describe The way that you shine An angel in disguise I wanna make you mine Wanna make you mine One time, that's you First class straight to Honolulu, we just vibing Relaxing in the sun till we gaze it At the stars, yeah, we're counting and counting Nigga, I'm so young, but easier than you Don't worry, I don't want to I ain't going nowhere, young, so It's no joke, no matter what I make it Don't wait our future Only with you, I see the bigger picture So we're just going to be more than one You know it, girl I'm sure, I'm sure I'll always choose you first You're my baby It's true so damn worth there's no one like you yeah too rare to find cause you are you're one of a kind no words to describe so we just got back from working at starbucks and ran to the grocery store grabbed some rice cakes and chicken and actually ran out of prepped food which is not like me, but that's kind of where I'm at with intuitive eating, where I was feeling a little bit burned out on meat and just kind of like winged it for a couple of days where I would just like make a steak or have protein powder and oats or something other than meat and then now I don't have any food prep. So I also have this like pre-prepared chicken and I got some dried fruit, some freeze-dried apples and strawberries as well which i'll show you what i have been making with that and also some roasted edamame for that same snack that i'll make later but i'm gonna eat now i have a call in about half an hour with a potential apartment that i might be moving to so i'm gonna make sure that i get a meal in now because i'm feeling pretty hungry and then I will have that call and catch you guys up on what's been going on, what's changed, what's new, and what's exciting. So I will catch you guys soon and show you what I make. So sometimes when I make a full day of eating, I feel the pressure of showing you like these really beautiful meals. And don't get me wrong, I really like to cook. I love my food. I love to enjoy the preparation of it. But I don't have a ton of time right now. I'm hungry and this is really what I want. <laughs> I know it'll digest really well. So I have a couple rice cakes, three rice cakes, obviously, that pre-prepared chicken, and then some mozzarella. This looks pretty gross, to be honest, but look, it's gonna be great. It's a good balance. It's gonna keep me full for a few hours, and it's really what I want. And I think that's a testament to the nature of intuitive eating and how Every meal doesn't have to be this big, wonderful event. You know, it can just be, I'm just craving some chicken and cheese right now, and that's what I'm gonna have. And if I'm hungry later, then I can eat again and have something, maybe when I have a little bit more time to dedicate to it, can create something more beautiful. And it's just not putting pressure on food to be more than it is, which is just something that we crave and want, and our body is telling us it, that it wants but also, um, you know, meeting the demands of the time. So I don't have a ton of time right now. My main priority is to make sure that I give myself some fuel so I can get back to the work that I was doing, prioritize that right now. And it just takes off the weight of making each meal this wonderful experience. Instead, I'm gonna sit here and enjoy this really simple meal. It's gonna be great. And then I can, again, spend a little bit more time later investing in my food, so to speak. As a side note, 
I love chocolate and this is like my favorite chocolate. So good. And I keep a couple of these in the freezer and they just come in like little squares like you can break them up. And I eat probably half of one of those big bars a day. Usually I'll have like six squares at night and then throughout the day I'll just have like a square with each meal. So I just had that rice cake and chicken meal and a couple of squares of dark chocolate and I'm making some decaf coffee to drink. I just love that each day I get to decide what I really want and nothing is off the table and it's just cool to see how much my body has regulated and just learning to eat an appropriate amount that supports my activity but I also get to eat things that I really do enjoy and I can have a whole giant bar of chocolate if I want in a day and I've learned that my body can totally handle it and sometimes I'm craving it and sometimes I'm really not at all but I always know that I can honor that craving and that has been such a big win and it's just exciting to reach this point with food so I'm gonna talk to you more about that later I'm gonna jump on this call now have some coffee and then I will catch you up so in my office I have this beautiful desk and I also have these chairs and stool but this chair is just barely making it. Besides Winnie's teeth marks, we've got loose parts and screws that are rattling. And to be completely honest, when I left my previous relationship for this one, I didn't really anticipate the things that I would now have to do that I previously relied on my husband to do. <laughs> so... I'm gonna need to buy a screwdriver one of these days and actually learn how to fix stuff. So that is a note that I am giving you more to hold myself accountable to actually stepping up and fixing this chair before I bust my butt on a coaching consult one of these days. So what's going on? Last time I talked to you guys, I was doing a keto diet and this was a bit of a shift. I went from being on a bodybuilding diet through the last several years up until May. And in May, Dee and I went to Spain. I, sorry for the chair. Dee and I went to Spain. I came back and I decided I'm gonna eat what I want and just figure out what my body likes. And I dove into intuitive eating a bit. It was something that was inspired by my own pursuit of trying to gain peace with my body and with food, moving away from a plan, moving from an externally set plan to relying on interoception or the internal signals that my body is sending me and making decisions based on that. But I moved from having a ton of structure and rigidity to no structure, which was exciting, it was overwhelming, and it took me a long time and it's still taking me time to really solidify what this means. It, in terms of intuitive eating, it's not a diet. You can't do it incorrectly, but the one way you can compromise your commitment to it is by not fully letting go of what's called the diet mentality. The idea that you need to be following a plan or some kind of structure for your diet as opposed to listening to what your body is telling you in the moment. You have to move away from an external rigid structure if you want to eat intuitively because you're shifting from that to internal signaling guiding your decisions. And you can't have both. So you can't really mess up intuitive eating, but if you find yourself shifting back towards diets, you are no longer by definition eating intuitively. Now, I do find that my body craves different things at different times. There have been times in my life where I have just craved fruit and I ate so much fruit and I got very rigid at that time in my life. I was young, like 19 maybe. And I thought, I'll be a fruititarian and I was just gonna eat fruit all the time. And then I would find that my blood sugar would spike and crash and I would feel like crap about an hour after eating 
this massive bowl of fruit. And I'd be like super bloated because it's a ton of fiber. So even though I enjoyed it and even though I wasn't gaining body fat, which was my primary fear at that time, it just wasn't really working for me, these, these fluctuations in my blood sugar. And there was another time where I really craved meat and I went full carnivore and I really enjoyed it and I got to learn how to cook all these different meats. I got a sous vide, I cooked duck and I spent $300 a week on meat and it just was not working for me to have a sustainable diet with that kind of expense attached to it. So. It was fun, I enjoyed it, I learned from it, and then I kind of outgrew it. And I moved through different diets over time, and each one has taught me so much about my body. So after I stopped bodybuilding, I was really craving some of my like vegetarian, vegan options that I had previously used back when I was vegetarian for about five years, in starting in high school. And I was vegan through the summer. I really loved it. I felt great on it. I did it for about three months and I was really enjoying it. I got to reconnect with cooking again. I felt like I was eating pretty intuitively. I wasn't tracking food. I moved away from weighing food at all and I stopped weighing myself for a bit. Then I found that my digestion just wasn't really great. I was bloated all the time and I was craving meat and I came home from jujitsu one night and I was like man I just like I would kill for some meat right now I was like all right the goal is intuitive eating so I can't stick to this rigid plan and eat intuitively so I came home I had some meat and it was like brain clarity and nothing against being vegetarian or vegan I think it's awesome I think you have to be very intentional with any diet where you're cutting out large food groups and I was really intentional and still there was clearly something my body wasn't getting. So I incorporated meat again and I was like, okay, maybe I need a little bit more balance. So I just went back to more of like a balanced diet. There were no food groups that I cut out. I just ate what I wanted when I wanted. But I still had some structure because I hadn't moved away completely from at least the times of day that I liked to eat. Then I started getting a little bit caught up in my body image again thinking well yeah I like eating what I want but I'm really craving like high fat foods and I've loved keto in the past and maybe I want to do that again and I thought this is great I want to experiment I'm learning my body I'm learning what makes it feel good I want to get my digestion in a good spot I've read so much about keto and there's so much science and research coming out about it maybe I should give it a shot However, I quickly fell back into that rigidity. I started weighing myself again. I started body checking a lot. I started equating my sense of self-worth and confidence with my weight or the appearance of abs or my leanness, even if it was perceived and not objective whatsoever. And I started getting really rigid. I was checking my ketones all the time. I was really frustrated because I wasn't getting into ketosis. And I ended up like restricting calories quite a bit just because I what really truly wasn't as hungry with such a high fat diet. And the more that I pulled back carbs and protein to basically nothing, the less calories I was eating. And I found myself getting back into that restrictive mindset. On top of that, I started circuit training at the same time. I was doing pretty intense yoga classes like five days a week and training on top of that and doing cardio. So I had a lot of stressors my sleep was really suffering and I was eating I was under eating right so I in my mind I was like this is a good thing I'm learning about my body my digestion feels great which is the one great thing about it but there were all these signs of like okay you're kind of creeping up on overtraining or being overworked without enough co recovery capacity you aren't sleeping enough you aren't eating enough you probably aren't getting a diverse amount of nutrients in general you're not getting enough protein to sustain muscle i could tell my strength was declining even though i felt my performance like my endurance was still pretty good 
And then I got sick. I got a cold that lasted like two and a half weeks and it just really kicked my butt. And I was like, you know, I feel like this is my body telling me that it's really run down. And if I do not honor it, I'm going to keep getting sick. I'm going to get sick all the time because my body's just trying to tell me it's not getting what it needs. So when I stopped keto, I came back to a balanced diet and I told myself, I'm not going to keep doing this. I'm tired of this pattern. I committed to intuitively eating, which means that I let go of the diet mentality. I'm not going to eat rigidly on a plan. And if I really want to prove the hypothesis that our bodies know what they need, that we will auto-regulate our intake based on what we need, based on our activity levels, and that there will be natural fluctuations, but we will, we will fluctuate around a really nice baseline of what our body needs. But that baseline cannot be based on my perception of what my body image should look like. It has to be based on what my body functions best at, which my body alone knows and cannot be dictated by a mirror. If I want to prove all that, if I want to coach that, I got to live out of that. Like that internal dissonance that I felt bodybuilding where I knew I didn't really agree with taking a lot of drugs. I knew I just, it wasn't good for me to be going through these like massive shifts in weight for my mental state. I knew that I was overeating most of the time. I knew that my digestion wasn't great. I knew my joints were getting beat up. There were so many things that were com like just conflictual inside me that I just made the call. I was like, I can't live in conflict anymore. But then as I get through this cycle of like, all right, I'm going vegan. Okay, I'm honoring my body through that. Okay, now I want to lose some weight. Yeah, I can lose some weight healthfully. So let's just go, let's go to keto. Let's cut out carbs. Let's start cutting calories. And I start slipping back into that mindset. Now I'm in dissonance again. I'm, I'm conflicted between what I want which is to eat what I want when I want and to love my body through it all. And what I think I have to do because of what culture is telling me, which is I need to be on a meal plan. I need to be super rigid with my food. I need to cut out certain food groups because carbs are the devil and grains cause inflammation and gut health and blah, right? All this stuff. And I was relying on external knowledge that other people were telling me that social media portrays as truth that even science is saying these are the answers for your diet yet the more that i objectively research everything regarding diet it's that our bodies function well on different things at different times and personally i know that my body communicates with me because i will be craving something like avocados i will crave avocados and i will want to eat avocados like three times a day and in the past i'd say no that's too much fat or i should have a balanced diet but i've lately i'll let myself all right i want i want to eat two whole avocados a day i'll do it and i will feel great and then i'll totally be over it i'll wake up one day and not even care about an avocado whatsoever now i have the freedom to do that and I don't know what's happening internally, but I do know that when I honor it, my body functions so well. My brain feels clear. My digestion's in the best spot ever. Still a work in progress. I'm still working on figuring out what foods make me feel good, but I can make decisions based on that. What makes me feel good? And now that I'm not afraid of certain foods, I have a choice. When we operate out of fear or dogma, we don't have a choice. We are forced into a corner. And then what happens is we feel restricted. And as soon as we can, as soon as a stressor comes up, as soon as we give ourselves a little bit of leeway, yeah, we go with it. We binge, we eat six crumble cookings in a setting, like naturally, because we're not meant to live in a box like that. But we put ourselves in a box and we, we totally compromise trust with our bodies by not believing that they're going to tell us what they need when they need it. But why does that make sense? Evolutionarily, we are programmed to, to know what we need and to pursue what we need. Now, the argument is that we're hijacked by all these foods around us that are like highly processed and, you know, very, um, very palatable and we're just, our brains are hijacked. So we can't make objective decisions around food. 
So what I recommend is just being really aware. I personally like to eat really close to the earth because I feel best. I don't think that's necessarily the best thing for everybody. I've also gone through in the past, this past week, I literally went went out with D. We had burger, wrap, sweet potato fries, came home, had a little bit of ice cream. Like that balance is okay. But I'm telling you, my digestion was not great after that. So now I make decisions more out of, okay, I want to try this thing. I might have a bite, but if I eat the whole thing, my digestion is just really off. And then that puts me in a bad mood tomorrow. But that mindset of like, yeah, I can have it. And you know, sometimes I will. Most of the time it's not worth it because it messes up my digestion. That is a choice as opposed to saying, oh no, I'm on keto, like it'll kick me out of ketosis, I can't. And then the minute I have a bite of a cookie, I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna eat all the cookies. I'm not saying we're all like that. I've gone through years of being what I would call highly disciplined of just, there's nothing off track. But then if anything compromised that, I would feel immense amounts of anxiety and Regardless of my level of rigidity, I never ever felt at peace in my body. Regardless of how lean I have been, I've never ever felt confident in my body. The more external validation I had, the, the more I thought I was accepting my body. So those times when I was really lean and I was uh, prepping and I was getting a lot of engagement on social media and even engagement in the gym, I was feeding off that external feedback all the time. But then the moment that I lost it, because I started gaining some weight again, or I became kind of numb to what people were telling me, and I just fell back into reflecting on how I felt about me, right back in that spot of not feeling confident, feeling like all my worth was dependent on a certain level of leanness, and yet when I had been that lean, I didn't even feel confident. So I'm done with that pattern. And I support people who want to who want to change their bodies, and I I love it. I think it's great to challenge yourself and push yourself to new limits with your training and your cardio, and try out different ways of eating that you enjoy. But if you're looking for peace on the other side of that, you will not find it. It's an endless chase, and I truly believe, and I am determined to live out of this belief that our bodies know what they need, that they can communicate that to us if we're willing to listen and if we take the time and practice learning to tune into our bodies, and that we will sit at a healthy body weight and composition for us, for what we need, if we just trust our bodies to tell us what they need. But unless you go with that belief and live out of it, you won't ever know that. I'm determined to find the truth that our bodies know what they need and that my body knows exactly how to regulate and I can enjoy food and I can work out when I want to and I can take off when I want to. And my body will learn to regulate. I am absolutely confident of that and I'm determined to live out of that and to keep this channel consistent with that belief because that's what I do believe and I, I want to apologize because I feel like I compromised that when I jumped into keto. I don't regret it because, because I learned a lot from it and I know it was part of this lesson for me. And it's something that I might have to relearn again. I don't know. I grew up in diet culture. I started dieting when I was like 12. So just eating intuitively feels a little bit unknown and I know that when I get stressed I'm probably going to go back to some of those patterns but I'm going to pull myself out quickly and I want this channel as it always has been to be a form of accountability and a way for me to share my process so you see there's no perfect way to do this like we're all gonna slip up or fall back into old patterns or subscribe to diet culture again but like the more we practice pulling ourselves back up out of the hole of, of distrust and misinformed information, the more we pull ourselves up and practice that, like, all right, get back on track, all right, get back on track, that resiliency is what leads to success long term.
I tell clients that all the time, success is not in perfection. Success is doing the best you can with the resources that you have right now and choosing to get back up again, to just get back on the path, get back on the path. And the path may change and that's okay. That's what reflection is for. But we have to commit to the truth. We have to know that truth to which we subscribe in order to operate out of that and be aligned as a person. So that's my update on where I'm at. I'm eating intuitively. I eat what I want, when I want. And what's been crazy is, although it was really hard about three weeks ago, when I recommitted to this, now I'm not really thinking about it. And I was able to eat out the other night without planning ahead for it. And I ate what I wanted. And I came home and felt a little bit hungry later and ate again. And I felt fine. And I'm learning to look at my body neutrally and even look at it and, and love it some days. And I'm not definitely not the leanest I've ever been. I can definitely grab body fat, but I feel strong. My strength is coming back in the gym. I feel a lot of mental clarity. My digestion has improved so much. And I don't think about food all the time. I don't feel overwhelmed and I feel like I can be flexible and I can make a meal out of whatever I have on hand and I can eat things that I like and I can make weird food concoctions and have fun with it or I could you know go out on a whim and have a drink and and all of those things are fine and cr contribute to this life of balance and with that I'm really starting to find this piece in my body that out of sharing this I hope can encourage you to know that there's another way if you're stuck in a diet, if you feel like there's no other way, if you feel like the only way, if the only path to self-love is to lose weight, trust me, I've been there and it doesn't work. It does not work. So I want to show you through my process. You can see me fail. You can see me strive. You can see me trip and fall and get back on track. And you can see what happens over time that there is another way. And I'm excited to share it with you. Now, with all that said, I'm gonna have my next meal because that chicken rice cake concoction, to be honest, did not fill me up. So it's almost three right now. And to be honest, I'm not on an eating schedule whatsoever. Some days I'll feel hungry like an hour and a half after a meal and I'll eat again. And some days I'll go like four hours and I've been busy and working and like, oh, I'm actually pretty hungry now. So. I really just let myself eat when I want, but I found that I typically eat every like three to four hours if I if I have a meal that's actually pretty satisfying. So it's been cool to just kind of learn, okay, I can eat when I want, and I do, but I kind of know what works for me to keep me full for long enough that I can get a good bout of work in. And I've also learned what does not keep me full. Like rice cakes are the least satisfying thing ever, and I usually like some fat with a meal or else I get pretty hungry pretty soon. So I'm going to eat this snack now. I put this on my Instagram yesterday. Yesterday probably isn't the same day as yesterday for you when you're watching this, but you can check that out. This is a kind of a weird snack, but it is absolutely my favorite thing right now. So I've been doing some cottage cheese. I really like good culture. I find this one is just really high quality, digests really well. Banana, a little bit of ghost protein. And then I've been topping it with dried, like freeze dried fruit, which is just a great crunch. I'm also gonna add some dry roasted edamame today, some chocolate chips. I sprinkle a little PB2 on top and then top it off with honey and salt. So I will show you what that looks like in just a second. Dreaming. 